everybody. It's Friday night. I know it shouldn't make a difference now that we're in lockdown, but for me it makes a difference. I'm ready for the weekend. I've had a really good week. Lots of busyness and stuff and things. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm ready for a bit of quiet time now. <laughs> I needed to pull some yarn out for a new cast on. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you the majority of my four ply or fingering weight stash. I showed you my um, my sort of minis and my odds and ends quite early on in the spring vlog series, but I haven't actually shown you the main part of it. So I thought you might like a quick rummage through. I've got as long as it takes for the chips to cook for the kids dinner, and then I'm gonna have to cut you off. So we better get cracking. This is mostly how I store my stash. I've got quite a few really large space bags one for each weight of yarn. So I've got a four ply, I've got a DK and I've got an Aran. And then as other bits and pieces come in, they get sealed up in some sort of plastic bag and added to the pile. Now, normally in January, the first day that the kids go back to school, I empty out my stash, all of it, every last ball onto my bed and make sure that my stash is up to date on Ravelry. So I take any pictures I need to. Um, and I usually end up pulling quite a few things out for the bring and take table at the Knit Tea Retreat or to pass on to friends. So now I'm going to tip this all out and show you what I've got. like a lot of knitters a pretty high percentage of my stash is four ply yarns so I've kind of got sweater quantity up there indie dyed bit of hand spun commercial sock yarn some things bagged up with patterns ready to go a bit of vintage yarn I won't show you what it is that I'm pulling out for my new cast on. You'll have to watch this weekend's normal episode for that. But there it is in its glory. I'm pretty confident that this is all listed in my Ravelry stash. So if you if you want a bit more detail on something that I don't discuss in a minute, there's a link in the box down below where, which you can click through to find me on Ravelry and everything should be listed in there. So let's give you a bit of a closer look. Oh, I'm not in sc on the screen. There we are. <laughs> First of all, I've got a separate bag of four ply, all of which was a gift. Um, I won't name names, but she knows who she is. And um, I, oh, was it a comment on YouTube? And I told her that I finally had some plans for part of the stuff that she'd sent me. So I'm really excited to be casting some of this on. Um, and it, quite a lot of it is posh yarn, which is a Welsh indie dyer. Really beautiful yarn. I'd never knit with any before, and it is quite hard to get hold of. So this is posh yarn, Eliza Sockweight, called Hearing Without Listening. And it's a grey, it's looking really purple on there. It's not. It's a grey green colour. And then there's four skeins of this gorgeousness. Again, this is Posh Yarn. That Posh Yarn is the name of the company. Um, and it's Martha, their Martha base, which is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And it's called Somebody Needs Their Nap. <laughs> now that colour is fairly accurate. So it's a greyish lilac. I've got four skeins of this. And I've got several skeins of Rowan Kid Silk Haze that I bought from Angela of Yarn and Yarns. It's looking a little pinker on screen. 
and I'm going to hold these together and I'm probably going to knit myself a Rocaine sweater from Pom Pom magazine. So that's those. Um, and there was also a skein of Dreaming Colour Smooshy in this sort of beautiful green with bits of brown in. And two skeins of Regia. I love solid German sock yarn. And she sent it with a lovely card, which I've still got. Um, oh, I've got a lovely skein of MCN that my friend Jeanette dyed for me. I showed this. It was part of the goodie bag for when we all went away in February. Yeah, high twist, merino cashmere nylon, hand dyed by Jeanette. I got two lovely skeins, both of which were presents from Katrin. Um, this is the Stormy Seas colourway from Brambles and Me. And this is Joy to the Wool. It's a Christmas set called Christmas Every Day. I've got five balls of Jameson and Smith jumper weight. And can you see how many different colours are in these coloured yarns? Look at that green, gorgeous. Um, and I'm going to knit myself the Craft Hoose hat and mitts. Um, and this was one of the Shetland Wool Week patterns. I've got their annual as well. And I bought these five balls of yarn from Wonder Wool three or four years ago at least. So I don't know why I haven't cast those on yet. I've got a whole sandwich bag full of this vintage yarn. This is Jaeger Alpaca 4-ply, 100% alpaca in the shade 389. Um, and it's vintage yarn. It's, come, it's a little darker than that, but that's not too far off. Um, from my great aunt Daphne. Um, I never met my great aunt Daphne but I had met her husband, my great uncle Gavin, who is my dad's uncle. And so he was part of the Welsh end of the family and they lived in Coventry for many years, which isn't far from where I grew up in Stratford-on-Avon. And sadly, after they both passed away, um, mum and dad were sorting out their estate. And great aunt Daphne was a real maker, um, particularly sewing. And so I inherited some of her sewing notions, including a darning mushroom and um, some of the yarn as well. So I've got a sweater quantity of this, which I need to knit up at some point. And um, I have no problem with alpaca. It's beautiful and soft. What else can I show you? Oh, two skeins of Patterns Croy, which you might not think is terribly special yarn, but it is special to me partly because I've never knit with it before, and partly because it was a present from Marceline of the Hey Brownberry podcast. Hello, gorgeous lady. Um, when I met up with her in Edinburgh last year, was it? And she gave me a couple of skeins of yarn and a pencil. So I'm looking forward to making those. A couple of more skeins of the Opal Claude, uh, Claude Monet yarn, again, bought from Angela. I've got some hand spun. Now Jenny spun this for me and it is probably too precious to use. It's a beautiful gold colour. Can you see the sparkle? And it's a hilltop cloud blend. Um, and Katie of Hilltop Cloud is another Welsh um, wool business, although she's not Welsh herself, she's English, but she's based in Mid Wales. And this is a lovely mix. It's BFL, Soy Silk, Merino, Shetland and Angelina absolutely gorgeous and other hand spun I've got is the purple is mine no the purple is another gift from Jenny that's the Zwart Balls blend from John Arban and some undyed Polworth so nice to get a bit of a hand spun stash going what else ooh this was a gift from Melissa nerd girl yarns in the colourway too english to say anything which she felt was just perfect for me sorry about the light blowing out a bit should i turn around a smidge do you know if that's any better ah this was a gift a while ago from hannah hello hannah and this is mothy and the squid and it's gold stelina and absolutely beautiful what else have i got oh i've got to show you this These two skeins of yarn 
the most beautiful toffee gold and brown colour is the first indie dyed yarn I ever bought um, and I fell in love with it and it is almost the colour of my hair <laughs> and it's from Old Maiden Aunt who is still going strong and it's um, from a collection of yarns called I Made You This Mixtape in the colourway Brass Taps and Oak. And it's taken me a long time to find the correct pattern. I mean, I've had this maybe 10 years now, um, but you've really, you've got to knit the good stuff, haven't you? So I bought myself a Catterson shawl design pattern by D. O'Keefe. I love her shawl patterns. They're absolutely beautiful. And I thought this one wasn't too busy. It's cables and lace. And I thought it would really make the most of the yarn. I wanted a big two skein job. That's that one. What's next? Uh, oh, this, these, I've got three skeins of this. And this was my main purchase from Wonderwool last year from a company called Woolly Knit. WoollyKnit.com. They're based up north um, and they produce the most amazing value, beautifully sheepy yarn. This is amazing. This is Black Welsh Mountain and Suffolk. It's a light fingering weight and it's sort of bitter chocolate coloured. I think I got three skeins for £15 and Silver Goose Gog this is because of you, because you bought some and I couldn't walk away. And I think Angela ended up with some as well. It, we, we just fell like dominoes. It was inevitable. And that I'm going to knit up into quite a plain but very useful cardigan. And while I was at Wonderwool, there's a vintage button stand. It really isn't very prepossessing as a stand, but it is full of treasure. And I treated myself to these buttons. Oh! And I've just dropped one that will go with the yarn perfectly. They've got like a coppery undertone to them. So I'm keeping those wrapped up. Oh, the buttons are from Brimstone Buttons and Buckles. Um, I don't know that they have a website, but you can certainly find them elsewhere. No, it's all right. I've got them all. Nobody panic. I've got to show you. Oh, I've got two skeins of Lewis sock from Rain's Obsess Obsessive Stitchery. Absolutely beautiful colour. Uh, this is 50% merino and 50% silk in the colourway Cardiff. And I won two of these skeins in the monthly thread I part taken. Um, and I still haven't decided what to make with them yet. Mind you, with two skeins, I could knit another Mount Pleasant tee. Maybe I'll do that. They're very precious. Um, oh, I've got a, a tiny sandwich bag with lace weight in it. Two skeins of Malabrigo um, and some leftover wagtail yarns. I'll probably end up holding those double and using it for something. Um, that goes with that. And I think that's, I think that's most of the interesting stuff, to be honest. So I've got one, one skein I'm going to pull out now for my new cast on. And I will probably keep the posh yarn and the kid silk haze out. Because once I finish my Cartrev cardigan, this is going on the needles. Um... And I'll probably keep out this skein of Volmeister because, um, oh, actually, will I? This is going to be Dave's Christmas socks, and I'm not sure if I'm ready to cast those on yet. So there we go. That is most of my four-ply stash. I hope you enjoyed having a look through it. Um, and like I said, most of it is listed in my Ravelry stash if you wanted any more details. OK, I think I can smell the chips, so I'm going to go. Um... Saturday I'm going to be recording a normal podcast episode that will be out on Sunday so I will see you then bye